This video will demonstrate how you can analyze the chloride content of a solution by titrating it with silver nitrate. After you aliquot your chloride solution into a flask, transfer approximately one milliliter of the acetate buffer to the solution. This will ensure that the precipitation and color change occurs properly. To the flask, you will then add a small amount of dextrin. I have the dextrin in a wax paper for easier transfer. I've dropped it into the garbage, not on the floor, because I'm also responsible. Once these components have been added, swirl the flask and add some additional DI water to ensure that everything is properly mixed and in solution. Finally, you'll add some of the dichlorofluorescein indicator to the solution. We're adding the indicator now before we even start doing the titration, but once you know roughly the endpoint of your titration, you'll want to add the indicator closer to that endpoint. This helps ensure you get a crisp endpoint and don't reduce too much of the silver due to the photoreactive nature of it. As with all titrations, you'll want to read the volume on your burette before you begin your titration, and then swirl the flask constantly as you're adding solution. Occasionally, you'll want to rinse down the sides of the flask to make sure that any splattered solution gets back into, solu into the total solution, so that you get a quantitative measurement of how much of your analyte is present. For this specific titration, the starting color is obviously yellow. By the time you get to the end point, you'll have a faint pink color. This can be a slightly subtle transition, but we'll have a photo at the end to make it a little more evident for you. The titration will be sped up at this point, so you're not bored by watching me do this for over a minute. You'll note at this point we're getting closer to the end point and the color yellow is fading away and it's looking a little more white. It isn't, however, pink yet. As we add some more titrant, you can see that there's a pink color that develops in the center, but when we swirl the solution it will go away. So we're getting close to the end point, but we're not quite there yet. One way to ensure that you're reaching your equivalence point as accurately as possible is to master the partial drop technique. Here, some of the titrant is still hanging from the tip of the burette. By using a stream of water, I can carefully spray that solution into the flask, rinse down the sides of the flask, and now I've delivered less than a drop of solution. This can be crucial in hitting the exact end point you're looking to reach. As I mentioned earlier, the color you're looking to achieve is a faint pink color throughout the solution. We don't want it to be a dark pink like Pepto-Bismol, but just a faint pink color like you can see here. You may find that keeping your titration flask on a white piece of paper towel or white piece of paper makes it a little easier to distinguish the exact color of your endpoint. Here you can see a comparison of a freshly prepared solution about to be titrated and the solution that I titrated previously. Notice that the pink color is relatively faint, but the yellow color is very vibrant.